Hey guys, Gimp Alchemist here today, and um, I've been getting a few requests about um, about cutting people out of backgrounds, doing something referred to as uh, rendering whenever you're working with the graphics world, and if you're talking about 3D, that is something else completely. Please don't let the terminology confuse you. I know it's complicated, but just bear with me for a bit. But um, I got a request a couple of... Um, However long ago, I guess. Uh, here's Blocker Nomi. He's one of my favorite video guys. Second. Hold on a second. Um, to where uh, what's going on is somebody has an issue where they, um, where they don't want to spend the time to use paths to cut it out of the background. But at the same time, they want it to still look really well. And I'm going to be doing a video addressing that. And for... Um, Freeze, uh, Freezo, I guess it's called. I mean, sorry if I mispronounced your name, dude. But uh, yeah, I'm gonna show you and everybody else who has a, um, you know, has this same question how to do this. The first thing you'll want to do is um, you'll want to take a photograph, of course. Now you don't want to do this with like you know your phone camera or or um, or some disposable camera that you got from Walmart. You want to get a somewhat decent digital camera to do this. And I'm going to show an example of, um, um, this is just an example, like models or something like that. As you can see, most of them are on backgrounds, but I can almost guarantee you that these actually are white backgrounds. Like in this case, uh, I, I don't know who this is at all. Uh, I really could care less, but you're just going to be my example, whoever, whoever you are. I don't, I don't know. Your smile's kind of creepy. Um... So I'm, I'm going to download this, and I'm going to show you some examples of how to get this working right. Um, what you'll want to do, probably, in this case, is um, this depends completely on which programs you're using, because there are a variety of um, graphics programs you could use to do this, but in this case, we are going to use GIMP, because that is what we call being consistent. I'll wait for that to load, and... Oh, for all, for um for those of you who are questioning um what this is, um I'm actually waiting for something to download so I can um so I can start another um and my actually uh you know my first review about uh what's it called um about emulation on computers. So I'll be working with that. I'm gonna drag this picture in here and start working on it. Now, a few tools that are going to be very 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 useful for the same purpose are going to be this uh I keep forgetting what it's called the fuzzy select tool but in Photoshop it's called the magic wand tool also the uh, the dodge and burn tools and I'm going to show you exactly how you can use it is like basically um, the way that this works is it selects anything within a certain color range so um, that happens and then by by dragging this I can get that range but then you see stuff start to happen like over here like to where it merges with colors and and that's that's never good but what we're going to be doing now is second thing you definitely want to do when you're doing the rendering process is you right click and go to add alpha channel you definitely want that otherwise it's going to screw like a whole just collection of things up and I'm going to tell you why in a second select none now, as you can see, it very roughly cut out an area. And the reason why it only did it roughly was because that doesn't fall under this color range. And then whenever I turn that up a little bit, you know, and move it around, it plays around with something called tolerance, which basically that means, you know, uh, how much of the colors that we get. So the dodge and burn tool in this case might actually be somewhat useful. And because of the fact that this is a shadow, I'm going to turn the dodge on. I'm going to dodge it, or also known as brightening it. Now, you're going to have to be somewhat exact whenever you're trying this approach, because in a way it's like you're painting it away, because of the fact that it's most of the same color range. So I'm going to want to zoom in for this. You also, it's very highly recommended you get one of these brushes down here, and I know every installation of GIMP has them, because... Um, well, that's just how it works. And you want to sort of, you know, color around the areas that you want to brighten up. And this will increase, you know, it'll increase the tolerance. And it should give you a very, you know, a fairly nice effect here. Now, 
there is going to be one little complication with this. Um, you may miss a few spots, but, you know, you just got to... It depends on how much time you spend on it. I mean, you really get what you spend your time getting. But then stuff like this happens. To where, say, um, say this, uh, say your clothing is white. You want to avoid white clothing at all costs if you have a white background. You you want to avoid that. You maybe, like, say a black color. Something as far away from that as you could possibly imagine. Just, it'll make this up just, you know, a lot easier. I'm going to check our time. Okay, we're making good time. All right. Select none. Now, you also want to do this for these sides, too, and it may not come out exact, and that's just something you're probably going to have to live with. But we get what what we're getting right now is we're getting sort of this effect where, like, I cut it, I cut it out, but, um, you know, there's a piece of... It's like there's a piece of her hair missing. Uh-oh. 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 Uh -oh. But that can be fixed really easily. If you run into a problem just like this, just get something called the clone tool. And you got to press Alt. This is, you know, this confused me for like the longest time. Or no, way, no way, it's Control. I was getting confused. And then you just clone that over. And as you can see, when we... I'm going to clone it a little bit. If you run into that problem. That's only if you run into this problem, though. And as you can see, it fixed that problem up quite well. Now, now here's another issue. It did cut her out along her figure pretty well. And, you know, what we're going to do with this is... Uh, it, it does that thing again. Oh, jeez. Um, you can solve that with a, the same, you know, the same sort of tactics. But try selecting different areas of color and doing this. But once you've got it looking about to the way you want, and no, I remind you one more time. I mean, rendering it, you know, the uh, the process of, so, you know, cutting her out or him or whoever you're doing is often the best way. But in this case, we're going to run into uh, an issue that um, I like to call it, it's um I like to call it white aliasing. But it's basically this sort of effect where you get these stairs. And they have a filter to fix that, but it doesn't really work too well. But I'm going to show you how to fix that. It's pretty easy. But it it's time-consuming, but but it's easy. So what we want to do now is we want to get this little... This little... Uh, what What is that? Is that supposed to be like a water drop? It looks more like, looks more like a water bottle. Well, we're going to get this blur tool. And you want to blur around the edges. Now you don't want to get into the you know in inside. This is only for the edges. Otherwise, if you do that, you could screw a lot of stuff up. And we're just going to keep moving down, and we're going to sort of blur that white out and blur the edges. This will give it more of an organic and more of a natural. Uh, what was that? Um, more of a natural look. Definitely, you want to do this for the edges if if you encounter this problem, which I can almost I can almost guarantee. And as you can see, it, it cuts her out pretty well. And as for areas like these, now, f now here's what we have here. We've got this. We've got this issue to where it's doing that, but uh oh, uh oh, uh oh, uh oh, it's it's spread out a little bit. So just get your get a fuzzy, you know, get a fuzzy like brush and just sort of try not to get too much of the skin because it'll distort the arm and make it look retarded. But um, no no offense to anyone. That was just that was just what I used, um, but you know, you just sort of another the last thing. This is probably going to be your last resort, but use this uh, use a fuzzy brush on your erasing tool, and then do it by hand and zoom in really close, and do that, and that would probably be one of the best ways. But also another thing that might help give it more of a real look is going um is finding the color tone of your background or something like say it's like a reddish color then you'd want to go to curves and maybe maybe play around with these a little bit cuz these can these you know by playing around with these you can get different tones and put in shadows and all kinds of good stuff and that concludes this tutorial and I will be back as soon as possible with another one